Video Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's October 16th, 2024. Just about 30 minutes to go to the cash close here on this Wednesday afternoon. The s and is up some 24 handles. It's just, you know, this marketplace right now, it's stuck in the middle with Spoo. If you know what Spoo is, SPU was the original symbol for the uh, S&P futures. Nevertheless, look, the whole marketplace today, it's a conflict inside of tech. It's like meta slips as in video rips. Everything else, again, is stuck in the middle with you. Let's actually break down some of the trade because, look, there are actually some areas that are, in fact, making real strategic moves, one of which... I'm actually going to start with the financials. Uh, and again, if uh, a little unusual over here, because it is a little unusual, the financials are breaking out right now to the upside. In fact, if we look at the auto expected moves, we are slightly outside the expected move. Again, slightly outside the expected move um, inside of the XLF. There's one, there's basically two weeks in a row that people is a uh, absolutely ripping move right now to the upside. And again, if I uh, sound like, oh, it's very unexpected, it is unexpected. I mean, you have earnings and uh, you had earnings this morning from like Morgan Stanley, which is, uh, again, breaking to the upside also quite significantly. If you take a look at uh, auto expected moves here, we are way outside the uh, upper edge of the expected move uh, after yesterday's kind of uh, wicked kind of, you know, uh, pullback in there. Nevertheless, it's it's the financials have a big bid under them. But, you know, you almost want to like push the financials aside. Yeah, that's helping the S&Ps. But the real trade that's going on right now, that's uh, that's the big driver. Okay, of uh, of overall markets and, uh, and Nasdaq, it's uh, Nvidia, which is right here right now, threatening, if you will, to uh, to break into all time highs. So Nvidia up uh, about 3.4 percent. Here's one that literally you want to watch it in the days to come. We break through the 140 level, and this thing is gonna have some wings to it. So uh, I would anticipate breaking through that 140 level and look through the 140 level for some confirmation. Actually, uh, gives legs, if you will, to the trade to the upside. Uh, a little breakout, uh, not dissimilar to what I just showed you inside of the financials, but at the exact same time. And I, I'll be honest with you. So it's been a mixed bag of goods inside of Nvidia this week. Um, and again, coming right up to this 140 level is, is critical. We've been flirting with it the last couple of days, but at the exact same time, there's there's kind of conflict in trade where uh, Meta is seeing some real sell side activity. In fact, here's another one. I'm bringing up expected moves more than halfway home to the lower edge of expected moves, specifically in Meta. Um, and again, you just you don't feel any news on this. OK, no news, no nothing. I mean, this is just straight out. All right. So what are we doing? Well, we're selling a little bit of meta. There's a little sell side activity specific to uh, Apple. Nothing too crazy, nothing considerable. A little mild sell side activity here to uh, Microsoft. And this is basically the market's turning around and selling uh, tech, but uh, turning around buying NVIDIA. And the uh, I think the most chaotic thing uh, about this is you know, you've you've literally got right now one product, which is NVIDIA, and that's been, you know, kind of the case, but one product that's literally holding the marketplace uh, together right now. And although we look at the S&Ps up 25, you're like, well, no, man, the, the financials are strong. Okay. Yeah. But the reality, okay. Yes, the financials are strong, but it's really, it's NVIDIA. That's actually the driver uh, behind a tremendous amount of the trade specific to the S&Ps. You know, moving down the list of the usual suspects, it's rare that I also bring up like Dow, but I do want to make a quick comment on the Dow, which is, <laughs> you know, up on Monday, down on Tuesday. You have to look at this because it's, it's well worth looking at. Up on Monday, down on Tuesday, uh, back up here on this uh, on this Wednesday. So, uh, by the way, overall, what do we have inside of the Dow? Uh, it's mildly, mildly higher on the week. But um, the reality is the Dow is actually being carried right now by a, a bid back under both United Healthcare. So uh, United Healthcare, which got smoked in earnings in yesterday's trade, has a significant bid back to it, uh, which is to the tune of 3%.
Moreover, looking at the Dow, you've actually got uh, Visa okay, and Goldman Sachs with it. But uh, Visa, this is a really significant move to the upside uh, inside of Visa today. Goldman Sachs also making a, a more strategic move. So Visa, Goldman Sachs, again, Morgan Stanley, I'm right back on that, you know, financials kind of uh, kind of train over there. But uh, again, it's rare to talk for me anyway about uh, the Dow specifically. But again, the Dow is uh, not market capitalization weighted. So like United Healthcare just means a massive amount, like a, you know, a $16, $17 move. Okay. For the most part, most of the Dow is uh, is that United Healthcare uh, move back uh, back higher? Again, Russell. There's no surprises inside of the Russell. Okay, other than and uh, this is worth zooming out on. The Russell is once again approaching very close to some of the all-time highs. Uh, you do have to go back a number of years to see the all-time high, but in the very near term, may actually be breaking out uh, to the upside over here. All right, so let's let's push past a little bit about you know what I would term some kind of slop-tastic trade. And, you know, we've been in, if you will, some slop-tastic trade. And again, a lot of people are going to argue, no, we're just headed to the upside. What I kind of construe as, you know, slop-tastic, that just basically means low volume, meandering around. Like, look at the volume inside of the S&Ps. It's horrifyingly low. You guys, look, you got to realize, like, Monday, Okay, Monday was uh, was a holiday. The bond market was closed. The equity market was open, but the bond market was closed. We're going to be lucky to do the same volume as even Monday. I mean, yesterday, yeah, we were rocking. The S&P sold off 50 points, but this we're just kind of slopping right back uh, up a little bit higher here. And I, I'll be honest with you, uh, the S&P is moving 24 points. That's nominal. Again, it's what I would term sloptastic trade. It's uh, again, right now, it's it's all about you know, AI and other tech is actually suffering for it. But it doesn't matter because NVIDIA has got enough market cap to continue to kind of prop things up out there. Now, in a much bigger sense, let's, let's back away from a, a discussion about any individual underlyings. Let's not even talk about volume right now, by the way. I am more than aware that uh, Netflix has earnings tomorrow, but oh, come on, that's not going to be, you know, a broader market mover, okay? The big one and the, 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 big, the big enchilada on the screen right now is right here. It's inside of the SPX. And the reason uh, that I'm uh, specifically digging into the SPX and the lines you see on your screen, they're expected move. And and again, the, uh, the reason for this, because you're basically at one, two, three, we're now in the fourth week of not, not touching the upper and or lower edge of an expected move. And that is uh, a little bit of an anomaly. There's only, I've been tracking uh, expected move on a week to week basis all the way back to 2017, okay? So all the way back to 2017, I don't mind, I can actually bring this up, snap here to a, to a three year, but I'll even dig out a little further in time and just show you, here's a 10 year, okay? So all those little hash marks on there, yeah, I go all the way back, okay, to 2017. Um, there's only one other instance, okay? One other instance, which happened in 2020, uh, where we had four, consecutive weeks uh, of not hitting the upper end or lower edge of the expected move. So with only one instance in the last, you know, since 2017, which is, again, a pretty significant period of time, um, I would take it that coming into this Thursday or Friday, okay, uh, again, I'm going to take the let's get ready to rumble again. I mean, right now, what has the market done? Well, look, you have this week almost Okay, it's just shy of an $88 expected move. And I'm talking about this all throughout the course of the week, but it's about an $88, okay, expected move. Actual move right now, I mean, literally, we're up less than like 30 bucks on the week. So it's nominal. Like this, it doesn't even make a difference right now, right? We, we haven't moved. We just simply have not moved in the week. So when I, when I sit here and I, you know, talk about like, you know, I'll take, look, I'm just simply saying we're very likely to hit 5,900, okay? or coming down to the lower edge of the expected move. And kind of ironically, I do want to bring up these levels here. The upper edge of the expected move is literally 59.02. The lower edge of the expected move, okay, is 57.27. So 
pick one, people, because they're very likely to hit it. Uh, that's not a foregone conclusion. Clearly, the marketplace is not moving right now. As I said, it's stuck in the middle with SPU, but um, there should be a degree of volatility coming into the uh, to the latter portion of this week, both Thursday, Friday. And there's not a lot of catalysts in here. Like, I'm not going to sit here and talk about catalysts. The ECB announcement, please, they can't get out of their own way right now. Jobless claims, not really going to do it. The Philly Fed, yeah, retail sales, that's, that's your big number on the week. Okay, but it just doesn't look like a lot of market action. So where's the market action going to come from? That's that's a great question. Uh, some type of exogenous event out there. Look, there's got to be a catalyst over here because here's the bottom line. The last thing I'll leave you with. I mean, you have a marketplace that's, as I say, it's you know meandering right now, and it's, a lot of people are like, no, oh, we continue to bid up. Okay, yes, but it's like positive drift in a really really slow marketplace. Okay, you do get like some positive drift, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Okay, but the uh, the bottom line, okay, in summation of this, you are actually still in almost a 20 vol, okay, and in a 20 volatility, you don't get days that like the S&Ps are not even doing a thousand contracts. Look at this. You got a day here where the S&P futures, what are they doing right now? 743,000 contracts, okay? You're almost 20 VIX. You got the bonds. They're moving around. I mean, the bonds are trading, you know, decent sized volume out there. Okay. It's just the S&Ps, as I said, stuck in the middle with you. Look, bottom line over here. And I've been saying this for a few days. Get ready to rumble. This marketplace is highly likely to move in the next two days. Uh, hopefully, we uh, we get out of whatever doldrums we're in right now because uh, uh, apparently the volatility sees something. And uh, the VVIX is also, okay, it's just not backing off. We're still at a 112 VVIX. A lot to think about as actually we go into this Thursday and Friday. But uh, the one thing that's overwhelming, okay, 20 VIX with a lack of movement. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.